Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 2-13-2022. Happy Super Bowl Sunday to use that to you all that celebrate. Um, today is the Odin Project Vlog Day 61. Got a lot to unpack here, so let's just get started. Um, we're going to go over the introduction here. So we're on Project Calculator. Uh, the last section of the... Um, last project, if you will, from the JavaScript section of Foundations. It says you've made it. By now you should really have a firm grasp on the foundations of JavaScript. Of course, there's plenty more to learn, but you should be able to create quite a bit at this point. Our final project is going to combine everything you've learned so far. You're going to make an on-screen calculator using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. As usual with these things, there are elements of this project that are not going to be that are going to be not going to be trivially easy for you but if you're you've been following the course so far you definitely have everything you need to finish it we're going to walk you through the various steps you can take but again how you actually implement is up to you important note before getting started with this calculator project we need to cover a word of warning as you look into how to evaluate complex mathematical statements in JavaScript you will likely come across the tantalizing eval function which I did read the links to the articles, basically don't use it. <laughs> so, however, this function can be very dangerous, dangerous and should not ever be used. You'll need to build your own functions to evaluate expressions as part of this calculator project. On the same note, when researching how to calculate expressions for this project, you may encounter solutions that suggest that you return a new function that evaluates a string, which actually I did see a little bit of that in my little bit of precursor work here we'll go over tonight. Similarly to eval, this should also not be used due to the potential pitfalls of evaluating insecure data. Besides, what, what's the fun and solutions that do all the work for you? Let's get to it. So, um, the assignment here, uh, and what I, I just did sec step one, if you will, section one uh, for tonight. Um, it says here are some use cases, abilities your project needs to have. Your calculator is going to contain functions for all the basic math operators you typically find on simple calculators. So start by creating functions that are for the following items and testing them on your browser console. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. So I won't read through the rest of it because we'll go through that in future videos. Um, so I will say some things that they say to be aware of. Um, there's gotchas. Uh, watch out for and fix these bugs as they show up in your code. Um, talking about like uh, more advanced mathematical calculations. Um, uh, should yield 42, they're, they're saying like um, if someone entered in 12 plus 7, you should do that, that operation and get a sum of that before uh, subtracting that out, um, etc., etc. And that's basically what this section says here in number 2. Your calculation should not evaluate more than a single pair of numbers at a time. So basically it's breaking it up into sections. Um, you should round answers with long decimals so that they don't overflow the screen. Um, pressing equals before entering all the functions on, on a, or an operator could cause problems. Pressing clear should wipe out any existing data. Make sure that the user is really, st really starting fresh after pressing clear. Dis display a snarky error message if the user tries to divide by zero. Don't let it crash your calculator. And then there's a bunch of extra credits. So things to keep in mind. Um, so what I did first, as you guys should do, is write out your pseudocode. So basically, I didn't write out the pseudocode for the whole application because that would be insane. Because I think there's going to be multiple changes and iterations to this. So I wrote out the pseudocode for step one here. So my pseudocode, I won't read it verbatim, but I have step one, start GitHub project, clone to local, which I did. And I won't show you how to do that because we're pros at that at this point. Just make sure you clone it down to your local, make your local folder. Um, step two, create HTML, CSS, and JS files and link them together. So I will show you that now. So I did that straight away here. I created my index.html, my style.css, and my script.js, which we'll go over in a moment. Styles currently empty. My JS has some stuff in it, and the index is the traditional boilerplate file with uh, the title change to JavaScript calculator right there. And then I also have 
a link to the style sheets, style.css, and then I have a script tag for my source for my script.js defer because I want that to run last. If you guys recall that defer method uh, or that defer switch uh, tells the browser to run the script last, R run this particular script at the end. So pre-process the HTML and the CSS before applying that. And that was number three number two and then number three I have a uh, pseudocode written out for create add function with console.log and test good um, and then sub a I have uh, no buttons for now uh, and, and we'll get into that so I basically I wrote a little bit of pseudocode um, and then I got it on the screen this is gonna look like a lot <laughs> but um, a lot of this is comments and this is you know, obviously not the best way to do it, but for right now, um, I feel it's best for me because I'm trying to say st I'm trying to stay super organized, and the best way I thought to do that would be to put uh, a lot of comments on screen, and these are more like to dos for me to remember to go back and do it later. Like it maybe I found something that I'm I know I'm gonna have that doesn't apply right now, but it's going to apply. Um, down the road or in the next section if you will so right now I'm basically my goal today is to b create the bones basically create the skeletal system that will add subtract multiply and divide so that's what I've got going on here so at the very top I have this section of code here and it's it's wrapped inside two as you can see there are two uh, um, comment lines that say the exact same thing it's just kinda like me remembering that this is a whole block of code that I'm going to get rid of and it, it just says uh, temp prompts for user input for now we will delete this block of code once buttons are introduced so since I don't have any buttons you see there's no styles uh, there's no style there's no there's no CSS running there's no there's no index there's no HTML for buttons and there's no DOM elements being ran here yet so this is how we're going to prompt so I just prompt enter Please enter a number. Please enter a second number, and that takes the uh, value of A and B again. This is all just temporary. This will go away uh, once we introduce buttons. Uh, and I have let num one equal parse A. That's because when I found out uh, by test when I tested, when you enter a number in there in that prompt, it comes a, it comes into A as a string. So you have to convert it with parse int, as we've talked about before, and that num one then becomes a number. Uh, same with num two just so we have two uh, integers to work with for our mathematics here. Um, and then I have console.log, num1, num2, and you'll see why I do that. I'm being very verbose because I want to see my console logs, because I want to see what want to make sure that it's doing the simple things before I try to get it to do the more um, the more advanced tasks down the road. So moving on here, we have a, uh, a call, to, call to functions to test with prompt values. So we have four calls, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and each with num1 and num2, pretty simple. So basically it's going to take the, the, uh, the parse integers from the enter of the first and second number. It's going to log them out here, and then it's going to shove them into each of the four uh, uh, functions. And we're going to count, we're, we're eventually going to return, as you can see here, add, they're all basically doing the same thing. Um, we we uh, stick the numbers in, add function, let add value equals num pl num one plus num two. Console log add just so we can see what the console log is doing, uh, giving it the um, label of add, and then add value will pop up, and eventually we will comment this co console log out, and we'll uncomment return vad value. Just I'm just putting again I'm putting in their precursor. I know eventually we're going to need to return, but right now we're just console logging so we can make sure this works. Again, the goal is just to do bare bones um, because we have nothing to return to anyway. At this point, we will, will very soon. And here's where we get to the to-do. It says, and that, this is just me typing, how to deal with multiple varying argument inputs? Uh, question mark, and I have a little answer to myself. Check old projects or Google it. And I did a quick Google search, and I found dot 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 array name, which you can put inside of the parameter here instead of num1, num2. I tried that, but it doesn't work yet because it's a spread, and so it loops through uh, 
so I'm going to want to lo look to incorporate this when I need to loop through an array, which as you can see, I don't have any arrays yet, so um, nothing built out as an array, so there's no need to do a dot 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 situation, but I will need to do that eventually because I, I won't say I need to, but I'm, I'm thinking ahead, and that's why I put it as a to-do because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to work with just num1 and num2 because we're going to have mathematical calculations going all over the place. So I'm keeping my mind open and just putting to-dos out there. And so essentially what I did was I copy and pasted that four times and changed the variables and changed the functions. So now we have a subtract, num1, num2, let subtract value equal the um, calculation of num1 minus num2, and we're council logging that out. Same thing with multiply, num1, num2, let multiply value equals num1 times num2, council log out, multiply, and divide num1, num2, divide value equals num1 divided by num2, council log divide. And all these have the appropriate name return statements for when we get to that point. So like I said, uh, it looked like a lot, but it's really not. It's a lot of commenting. Um, it's 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 long-winded, but like I said, I wanted to be methodical and take my time and make sure that this the bare bones of this thing works correctly, and and it does. So everything's already saved. So if we go out here and we run it, please enter a number just for fun. We'll say five. Please enter a second number five. So this is gonna input it and parse it and then um, shove it through all four functions and report out. So there's num1, 5, num2, 5 again which is just being verbose so we can follow the code and make sure the, the algo is working right. Add 10, so 5 plus 5, subtract is 0, 5 minus 5, multiply is 25, 5 times 5, and divide is 1 because 5 divided by 5 is 1. So we know that works. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry if I coughed in your ear. So we restart here. We can also do, it will take um, floats. So if we do if, um, there uh, t and negative, so there's one and five, so added six, subtracts negative four, so it does spit out a negative number, and it does multiply out again, and then it floats. So we got a div division of 0.2, which does floats, which is sweet. Actually, I didn't test out negatives in as the input. Let's just see if this works. Negative 2, 1. Negative 2 for num1. Num2 is 1. If you add them, you get negative 1, which is true. And if you subtract them, you get negative 3, which is true. You multiply them, and you get negative 2, which is true. And divide is negative 2, which is also true. So, yeah. Looks like that works great. Um, now I'm going to stress test it again, because I didn't do this in testing. Let's see if I give it a 0.2. Would. Ah, see, there we go. So I've got some work to do. I'll have to make a note of that. Um... Write that down right now. Let's see. Let's do right down. I'm gonna write down on my notepad here my pseudocode. Okay. To do fix bug. See, uh, it's good we did this. We always are. You want to make sure your your basic bare bones is bug free before you move on. So fix bug of um, float inputs equals not a number not a number on calcs okay so I've got that to do for next time or whenever I get on this again so that's cool so and I I doubt it'll probably it probably won't do um, fractions I I very much doubt it oh that's surprising <laughs> I don't know if that's right though I'm not a math whiz, so I'd have to do that math by hand, figure it out. But uh, I'll have to look into this more. Um, again, this is probably uh, actually it's a good learning lesson here because it um, it goes right into that those gotchas down here. So watch out for these bugs as they show up in your code. Um, you know, about evaluating chunks. We want to evaluate chunks at a time. 
and you should be able to string together several operations to get to the right answer, each with paired numbers. Okay, so we're not quite there yet because we do in the next section create something. We create a variable or a function called operate, and that will start can you know kind of like um, um, chaining these together. So we're not quite there to that one yet. Uh, okay, there you go. You should round answers with long decimals so that they don't overflow the screen. Oh, that's overflow, but okay. So I read long decimals, and so I thought maybe that might be the answer. So pressing clear. Okay. Um, I do need to put in an error message uh, also to make sure that they don't divide by zero and because we don't want our calculator to crash. I'll put that as a to-do as well. That probably is something that needs to be in the bare bones. Um, add in error message for divide by zero. Okay. And I'll go through this again later. I don't want to bore you guys on the video. So um, that's it for today. So that basically, in a nutshell, like I said, i got to polish it up a little bit. But getting the bare bones set up for add, subtract, multiply, divide. If I find out I'm missing a whole bunch of other stuff, I'll go ahead and uh, my vi next video, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow or not because I've got some Mondays are my busy personal day, so I've got some things going on, so I may not record tomorrow. But if I do, if it's uh, chunky enough to put it out as a video, I'll 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 append on to this uh, number one. Otherwise, the next time you see me, we'll be uh, creating the operate function and doing some more uh, testing on that, a uh, little more advanced stuff. So um, with that said, um, hope you guys enjoyed uh, and come along the journey with me and learned a little bit tonight. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content. And uh, let me know in the comments uh, how you guys are starting out with, uh, with this uh, calculator project. It's going to be a doozy. We're going to be in this one for a while, and there's going to be quite a few parts of the series. So buckle up and get ready. So with that said, till next time, see you.